I think President Trump has done a good job and will continue to talk about the two key policies that everyone is discussing in Wisconsin, and that's the impact uh, of inflation and the cost of living, uh, and the second being border security. And the contrast uh, between the Biden-Harris administration and the President Trump administration on these two issues could not be more clear. If we're focused in on bringing costs down for families that can't afford the things that they need, and we're focused in on the importance of securing the U.S.-Mexico border, which is having a direct impact here in the state of Wisconsin, we have an opportunity uh, to be successful this election. Kamala Harris is also making a democracy argument here, Congressman. You might have heard that uh, next Tuesday there's going to be a, a rally or a speech on the National Mall. Kamala Harris has pulled a permit uh, to straddle the mall with the Capitol behind her to talk about the threat to democracy that she sees Donald Trump posing here and will recall the events of January 6th. We're hearing a lot about retired General John Kelly's remarks Today, Donald Trump invoking Adolf Hitler, he, he too talking about the quest for absolute power. And I wonder what the Republican answer, or maybe your answer, in a state like Wisconsin is when you hear questions about this. The rhetoric over the last two weeks will most likely continue to increase. That said, I think we're best served when we're focused in and having a conversation on the policy differences uh, between these two candidates. Uh, and I think when you have that conversation, you ask people, were you better off under four years under President Trump or four years under the Biden-Harris administration? The answer is clear. Uh, people were better off when President Trump was in office. And so this is a unique election where we effectively have two previous incumbents. Uh, there are going to be a lot of attempts to distract from the economic policies of the Trump administration, in large part because they were mm -hmm. so successful. And so I think at the end of the day, this is going to come down uh, to a discussion about policies and the two policies that are front and center is the impact that inflation is having on families uh, and the importance of securing the U.S.-Mexico border. What about securing uh, the Capitol, Congressman? As Joe mentioned that Kamala Harris may be calling back to January 6th in her speech next week, we did learn yesterday that fencing around the U.S. Capitol will be in place here in Washington from January 5th through the 21st. Can you tell us anything, given your seat on the administration committee, as to what exactly is planned around the security of the actual certification of the vote and of the inauguration itself? As chairman of the Committee on House Administration, we oversee U.S. Capitol Police and other security apparatus in the Capitol. Um, what is key here is that what we are doing is reacting to any threats that we see, and we make sure uh, that our law enforcement agencies have the resources they need uh, to keep the Capitol open uh, and to keep visitors, staff, uh, and members safe. Uh, in my conversations uh, with U.S. Capitol Police, with the House Sergeant at Arms and others, uh, I do believe uh, that we're acting to make sure that they have the resources, that they will have the resources, and that we will be able to make sure uh, that uh, the public, uh, as well as staff and members, are able to be safe here on Capitol Hill. That's important, uh, Congressman, and I appreciate your talking about that to the benefit of our listeners and viewers who are concerned about this. There have been still so many questions about what law enforcement should have been and could have been doing that day. Have you heard of any threats? Are we talking about the Proud Boys again? Is this going to be a peaceful day in the Capitol? Well, it needs to be uh, peaceful and safe in the United States Capitol, as it should be every day. Um, that said, uh, the security teams here in, in Washington, D.C., and at the United States Capitol uh, are, are actively monitoring for any threats from anyone, whether or not that's domestic or foreign, uh, from the left or from the right or somewhere uh, in between. Uh, my role as the policymaker uh, is to make sure that we have the resources we need to keep uh, the U.S. Capitol safe uh, and to do that while we keep it open and accessible to the American public. Uh, that can be done. I feel mm -hmm. confident that we are well positioned to make sure uh, that that's the case. Well, and before we can get to those days in January, we do have to get through the election. And I know in this cycle, you have been paying co close attention uh, to campaign finance, looking specifically at Act Blue. Uh, but there's been a lot of questions around campaign finance raised just within the last week, Congressman, surrounding Elon Musk giving a million dollars to a registered voter in a sweepstakes if they sign a petition regarding uh, the right to free speech and bear arms. Do you share campaign finance concerns about the activity of Mr. Musk? I don't have full visibility into exactly how that sweepstakes operates. Obviously, it's incumbent upon everyone to follow uh, campaign finance law. I think broadly, we should be encouraging uh, people to vote, obviously only doing that uh, under the guise of law. I would trust uh, that somebody as smart uh, as Elon Musk has a series of attorneys who have explored that. Uh, I don't know the inner workings of the, uh, of the sweepstakes, uh, but I trust that his attorneys have determined it to be legal. 
That said, uh, I just broadly encourage everyone to make sure that their voice is heard this November and that they take advantage of the opportunity uh, to vote in an absolutely essential November election.